So this video is going to be a primer for what I suspect will be several videos in the coming weeks and months on the next manufactured epidemic in Australia. I speak, of course, of the epidemic of rape and sexual assault on Australian university campuses. Now, for those of you in the United States, you're probably asking, what took you so long? We've been having one of those alleged epidemics in the States for years. Uh, driven largely by the Obama administration, although it's a phenomenon that started in the 90s, really, uh, there's been a huge uh, misleading uh, frenzy uh, to the effect that there's something called a rape culture on our campuses, that, that rape is rampant, that it's an epidemic, that it's increasing, that the colleges don't care about it and won't do anything for the victims. Uh, and the Obama administration has driven this by aligning itself with left-wing academics, by suddenly in 2011, on April 4th, 2011, proclaiming a whole bunch of decrees, the purpose of which was to destroy the due process rights of young men in college who are accused by young women in college. Sometimes it's a man and a man, or a woman and a woman, but in general, men accused by women of sexual assault, although really it doesn't really have to meet the definition of sexual assault to get you in trouble these days. It's morphed into a comprehensive system of federally directed regulation of all sex on campus. Now I did give you a heads up on this in a video back in June. Here's what a much younger me said a month ago. If somebody decides, usually the woman, a day, a month, a year, two years later, gee, I didn't like that. I wish I hadn't done it. That's all. The guy can get kicked out over that alone. And that is what we should brace ourselves for here in Australia, an attempt to lower the standard of proof in sexual assault cases and railroad men out of university on spurious accusations. But before you do that, you have to create a hysteria, and that's where the hunting ground comes in. But that's just part of the strategy. At the same time, the hunting ground was screening across Australian universities. The National Union of Students Women's Department published a report on sexual harassment on university campuses in Australia. Let's go back to Patina Art. And it's all being set up to promote a similar idea of a rape culture in Australian universities. That's what it's all about. That's why this movie is being shown on the ABC. That's why this movie is shown around Australian universities to create panic and this idea that children, that young women are particularly vulnerable in a university setting. And it is total rubbish to suggest that, that, that there, there's a particular problem in that context. And yet we've got the Human Rights Commission spending a million dollars cooking up a new self-reported survey where women can complain that, that someone once looked at them in the wrong way and this is part of unwanted sexual behaviour. It's, it's all included in this notion of a rape culture. And then the universities will come up under pressure to set up tribunals like the one that convicted this poor young man in America. So the point of this video is to walk you through the steps of manufacturing this alleged epidemic. Let's go back a year to the release of the aforementioned National Union of Students Women's Department survey, which made the bold claim that 73% of women had experienced some form of sexual harassment, the major type of harassment being staring or leering. To put it plainly, this survey is an absolute joke. It violates just about every basic principle of survey research. It was self-selected and thus not a representative sample of students. 359 students out of 1,366, or 26%, identified as queer, which I would suggest is not representative of the university population. Although given that identity has become more akin to fashion these days, who knows? But I seriously doubt it. Also, a lot of the incidents didn't occur on campus. Now, it's worth remembering this survey covered sexual assault as well as sexual harassment, and they also had another category called physical mistreatment, which is just assault of a non-sexual nature. When it comes to the more severe forms of assault and sexual assault, most of it occurred off campus. Now, you might be saying, yes, we know you've debunked this survey before, it's a bunch of bullshit, so what's the point? Well, the point is the public is force-fed this bullshit as though it were truth. A year ago when this survey was released, it was given airplay on the taxpayer-funded ABC. 
Well, the Human Rights Commission is to undertake a major new survey into the prevalence of sexual assault and sexual harassment at Australian universities. A study last year by the National Union of Students found more than 70% of respondents had experienced some form of sexual harassment. 27% said they had been sexually assaulted. But Universities Australia says there were some question marks over some of that data and they hope this new report will paint a clearer picture. Oh, and by the way, before the host... John Barron became an enabler of spreading false information. He used to be a fact checker at the ABC. So just let that sink in for a moment. Anna Hush is one of the university's current serving women's officers, a signatory to this letter, and she joins us on the drum. Anna, welcome. Thanks for having me. So what kinds of things are going on at Sydney University and presumably at, at other tertiary institutions around the country now as well? Well, there's, I mean, there's a lot of sexual assault and harassment that happens on campus. That's something we know. Uh, we don't quite know the extent of the problem, but we do know it's there. So there's a lot of it, but we don't know the extent of it. That's mildly contradictory, but I think it's worth noting because this line pervades the entire narrative. They've started out with the conclusion that it's a widespread epidemic. The survey is just a formality. That's called putting the cart before the horse. Um, and we also know that there's a significant problem with underreporting. So the university's own survey last year found that only one in a hundred incidents is reported to the university. So I guess that it raises two issues. One, why is it happening? And two, is the response adequate in your experience and, and from those that you've had dealings with? What happens if, if there is an incident, harassment or assault at Sydney University? Uh, are people receptive to it? Are things done? Well, I think there's major problems with how it's handled internally, and I think that's probably why a lot of people don't choose to come forward and report it. Oh, really? Because even your woefully inadequate survey says the biggest reason is because they didn't think it was serious enough to report. That reason was almost double the next most popular reason. I thought I could handle it myself. You see, a lot of women aren't delicate snowflakes. They can shrug off someone staring at them. And if some guy says, hey, nice ass." A lot of women are perfectly capable of turning around and saying, yeah, and you'll never get a piece of it. Or piss off, idiot, you've got no chance. Now, this drum piece goes on for about 13 minutes, and if you want to see a thorough ripping to shreds of this nonsense, check out Gary Awesome's video on the topic he made last year. I just want to show you some small pieces to highlight how the narrative of misinformation seeps out into the public sphere. Jane Gilmore, I want to bring you in here as well because I understand that you, you've uh, had some connection to... So this is not just something that's happening in Australia. In the United States and elsewhere, there's a lot more awareness of, of sexual crimes, assaults on colleges, and, uh, and this seems to be a part of that kind of broader awareness. There was a really amazing documentary made called The Hunting Grounds that looked at how much sexual assault was going on at the university campuses in America, and it was a shocking, shocking movie. won a whole lot of awards, and I would highly recommend that anyone sees it although it should come with a trigger warning you can see from space. And I was involved in a couple of projects doing screenings in Victorian universities of that movie and then discussions afterwards. So if you're a casual observer, you'd think that the hunting ground was a credible source of information given that spiel, instead of the widely discredited piece of propaganda that it is. And of course, as alluded to here, Jane Gilmore has been responsible for screenings around Australian universities, which, unlike the red pill, drew absolutely no protest whatsoever. Now, let's see what happens if you dare question one of these statistics. Certainly, when I was at university, Sydney University in the 60s and 70s, um, this sort of problem was uh, endemic. It was, uh, uh, it was a, a widespread problem, and I don't know that it's necessarily changed a lot. So I think that there is uh, ample material for uh, investigation, although I've got to say I'm a little bit surprised at the figures that are quoted, 70%, um, saying there's been some form of sexual harassment. I mean, I... I, I I think that's a little bit on the high side, but I've got absolutely no doubt that on a student-to-student -student basis and a staff-student basis, sexual um, harassment Anna, and sexual Anna, assault are Anna, were you surprised by that? We, Anna, were you surprised by that 70% figure? Because I wasn't. No, not at all. Um, so why were high. you surprised by it? Well, I suppose we're hearing, we're, we're hearing mm. figures yesterday, Peter, that it was, it was close to 50% of employees of the Australian Federal oh, Police. So yeah. perhaps it's not surprising that it's 70% of uh, lots of no, young, young women in a, in a university. Now, this guy is totally on board with sexual harassment being rife across institutions, yet he has the temerity to question the 70% figure, which, of course, he's right to do, given the extremely elastic definition of harassment used in the 
non-survey, yet he gets smacked down, not by evidence-based arguments, but by feelings. I wasn't surprised it was 70%. Therefore, how could you be surprised? Well, I'm convinced. Unfortunately, it appears that no one on the panel has even read the report, because if you had, you'd know that 70% figure is laughable. Now, to finish this segment off, let's bring in the all-important listen and believe narrative. Ahead, what Jack. about support for the students that, that have suffered some kind of incident? Because I've spoken to students that have had to go back and live in the colleges or go to class every day with the person that raped them. And the university say to them, well, he hasn't been found guilty, so there's nothing we can do. It's the assumption that until it's, until it's been proven in court, the victim is lying. Absolutely. And, and so nothing is done to protect the, those victims from having to see their rapist every day. What a ridiculous statement that alleged victims are presumed to be lying. It's the presumption of innocence of the accused. You know, one of the foundational principles of the criminal justice system. What Jowley Jane really wants is a presumption of guilt of the alleged perpetrator because alleged victims are to be automatically believed, don't you know? Now, the Human Rights Commission says that its survey was sent to a representative sample of students across all Australian universities. There's also a second part, which is an open submissions page that invites any member of the public to share their experience. Now, ethics approval was granted for the survey. However, for the submissions, quote, ethics approval is required in relation to research. The information provided in submissions is not research in the sense of a survey, but rather provides an opportunity for all members of the public to share their views. And that's important for constructing the narrative because it's an unfortunate fact that people are often swayed by emotional testimony that you will get via submissions rather than the data. So you can see the manufacturing of an epidemic taking shape. You have a discredited documentary film being shown all across Australian university campuses starting more than a year ago. Then the publication of this ludicrous survey which sets in motion the Human Rights Commission to produce its own survey. The taxpayer-funded ABC last month made the hunting ground available on its website, and now news stories are coming thick and fast, less than 10 days before the Human Rights Commission releases its report on August 1st. And it seems by the reaction of universities, the verdict is a foregone conclusion. And it will be those news stories and some of the dubious claims within them that will be the subject of my next video. So, do you think we can assume what the Human Rights Commission report will say? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you next time.